Hello again, everyone. We are Gaming by Gaslight. Welcome back to Sunless Skies, where when we last left off, we stopped at the Clockwork Sun. To be honest, there's almost a part of me that wishes I could, like, kind of pan the screen over so we can look right there into the heart of the Clockwork Sun. But anyway, let's have a little bit of a read here. We're probably going to want to go back, and then we'll to London, that is, to reduce our terror, and then maybe come back in and check out what's going on here. But anyway, let us visit the Clockwork Sun. All right, let's see here. I believe we read all this when we last uh, started, so let's start. Let's head to the sundial shape building. Ooh, a whole bunch of experience. Yearning burning. That sounds ominous, to be honest with you. Azimuth is an enormous sundial without shadow. It's roof topped by a golden shark fin gnomon. There are still racks of yellowed pamphlets on the walls. It once served as a kiosk selling tickets to sunspotters the pilgrims and tourists that were expected to flock here. These days it is more like a temple. Frescoes on the curved walls depict the triumph of the new sun over the old. Poor soul. Dead and stuff now. Ooh, what's this do? Request access to the sun-shattered dome. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can't actually do that until we have a hundred terror. At most. I see. Okay. Oh, wait, never mind. I can access it. I, I feel like I don't want to because, you know, this could cause us to go insane, like considering it's got this whole terror thing going on here. Anyway, let, let's uh, talk to the dazzled sequencer. I am a priest of the new sequence, declares the sequencer. The brightest truth, the wildfire that has swept Albion. He points out at the expanse of the sun. There burns a beacon, a savior, an aspect of God. We venerate the clockwork sun and its immortal architect, our empress. I'm here to greet pilgrims and safeguard the souls of our engineers. Azimuth is also the only access route to the sun shattered dome, an exhibition hall that was built back when we received more visitors. The dome is terribly dangerous and I advise you to avoid it. No matter how much you hear about the priceless artifacts inside. Gotcha. So don't don't go in there just yet. Especially since it's apparently gonna kill at least four people, possibly. So what does the sequencer want? There are many poor souls out there in need of our help. Beleaguered ignorant masses. I've never met them, but I'm assured they exist. He pauses to wipe his eyes. When we lift them from their contemptible state, perhaps they will come to appreciate the greatness of the sequence. He sends an orderly to fetch a wooden crate. Once it's set down before him, he wraps the lid proudly. 600 manuals on how to correctly tie a bow tie. Deliver these to Brabazon Workworld, and I'm sure they will be immensely benefited by their improved understanding of etiquette. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll, uh, just go now. Let's check out the glass house. An isolated section of the abandoned exhibition halls have been repurposed to hold not treasures, but prisoners. Oh dear. Each wears a gray smock rather than a protective suit. You don't suppose these prisoners are gonna be, like, chucked into the sun at some point, do you? Leaving them utterly undefended from the ravages of sunlight. They sit slumped in unlocked cells, making no effort to escape. Where would they go? All right, so we could speak to them, but it's only a 58% chance of success, so I don't know if <clears throat> if we want to, uh, you know, if we want to uh, risk this. Let's see, some of the prisoners are shining at the seams. Some have eyes of curdled glass. A fractured face turns to watch you. Oh. Oh my. That, that stuff out there wasn't ice, was it? They're turning into something. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Anyway, if you are singing in praise of the sun, mauves bloody and throats tattered, you should perhaps be horrified, but the song wraps tender chords around your mind and numbs you. Glass crunches underfoot. When you lift your boot, you discover a cracked ear beneath. Oh dear. Uh, you know what? Let's come back to this when we have like higher hearts that way we have a, a better chance of success because I don't know if we can like if this is something we can like do multiple times because I know with some of these some of these options it's like 
if you fail it once, then it's like basically failed forever, or at least I guess on this playthrough. And some of them, like uh, climbing mountain in Lustrum, that we can like keep doing forever with no real, you know, downside. So, yeah, I don't want to risk it. Anyway, let's approach the half glass, the half glass empty. Only one cell is locked and the man within is neither singing nor screaming. The left half of his body is shimmering translucent. Oh dear. Well... Oh, we could help him escape. But first, we should be asking some questions, shouldn't we? Only the flesh and muscle of his left half has vitrified, not the bones and blood within. The glass is suffused with a thousand fine frozen capillaries, like delicate red cracks running through ice. He fixes you with an anguished stare. Get me out of here! The others would not leave even if they could. Their minds are lost. The empty attempts a one-sided shrug. And well, the Empire sent me here because I was smuggling sunlight from the Neath, back before the horizon closed. When I sold it, I told my customers that the light from the clockwork sun was toxic, and true sunlight was the only cure. Ended up causing a minor panic in London. I think one of the engineers locked me in because he took offense at my criticism, though. He gestures at his vitrified body. I stand by it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That clockwork sun is definitely, definitely not good. Yeah, sure, we'll help him out of there. You know, because that's like the decent, humanely thing to do. And also, screw the queen! You know, executive of 40 derives from the masses or something like that, if you get the exact quote. Yeah. But then again, when you literally have the power of God, you know, assuming the queen actually is able to control the clockwork sun slash dawn machine slash, like, Satan engine, then, yeah. Yeah, I've got a bad feeling about this, I for way. Anyway, thank you! His voice is hoarse and he speaks in barely a whisper. You will need to find a permit for my release and present it to the steward. Forged, legitimate, I don't care. Okay. I'm sure we can get some permits at some point. And we need three of them. Wow, that's a lot of... A lot of stuff. Anyway, let's go to the vault. The Terpescore Vault. Beneath the machine-bristling surface, you find a ring of nine vault doors, each engraved with the name of a classical muse. Eight are locked and barred, behind signs saying things like vacant or under renovation, or in one case, unfortunate chronological discrepancies. Oh dear. The ninth, marked Terpescore, is the only door open to you. When you enter, your footsteps ring through dusty barracks and abandoned canteens. These are the engineer's quarters, but they are all on the surface working. Except one. The broken steward has been working on the sun since before it first shone. She has been here far, far longer than any of the engineers above. Oh, that's ominous. Oh, well, we'll give her a chat. She catches you glancing at her mouth and smiles even wider. Her teeth, of shar or her teeth are shards of cracked glass, protruding at odd angles from her gums. Ooh, that can't be comfortable. It's not just the teeth, she says, with a brusque air that brooks no sympathy. The damn sudden turned my bones as well. Terrible nuisance, really. Gets in the way of work. You notice her fixed neck, her stiff limbs, her careful movements. It's not too bad, she says. Good thing I like soup. And also my voice cracked a little there as I was trying to... Do something resembling a voice for? Ooh, yes, this problematic material. All right, so yeah, we've got our supplies. Oh. Oh. Well, that's kind of ominous now, don't you think? Let's uh, let's get out of here. This this place gives me a bad feeling about like everything. Oh dear, I also think we might be too far away to. Get rid of our terror in time. But we'll try. We will certainly try as we run from this madness. I mean, assuming it's anything like New Winchester, once we're within the general range of London, we should be safe. Yay. No, there's no way we're getting back to London in time. So we're gonna gain a little bit of another layer of terror. But yeah, so all this glass is like the glassed over remnants of people, is it? People and or animals. 
and or other things. I mean, like, that glass can't all be people, can it? I mean, I suppose it could be. I would hope it's not, but, uh, gods only know, huh? Gods only know. Dreadful place, dreadful place. Ooh, the searching lights of watchtowers away in the night. Oh, hell. Okay, well, that's not coming after me, but watchtowers. Mordecai's bowl. Alright, cool. Oh god, 95. I really wish we had a faster engine. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, probably should have opened the episode with this, but there's been an update since we last left off that adds new, new kind of like random events that can happen to us while we are traveling. Storms and winds and other things. Interesting stuff. wonder what's up with this Mordecai's bowl thing and kind of reddish lights here. Yeah, there's no way. We're getting into range of London in time. So we're going to gain a level of terror. And, you know, it's a little... Maybe I should have just went straight back to London after, uh... After going to, uh, Whirlbury Jacques de Mare, but... You know, such is life. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes! Unless... Okay, there it goes. All right. As you attend your paperwork, you feel the insistent crawl of watchful eyes in the back of your neck. No one is behind you. It would be impossible, ridiculous to even entertain the notion that someone is behind you. Well. Sure, why not? As it turns out, there is no one there. Just an empty room and a window offering a view onto the star-sprinkled void. Someone clinging to the hollow side, peeking through the window. Surely not. Yet when you return to your paperwork, you once again feel watched. Kind of wonder if, like, if I choose the right options, if it'll, like, somehow not have something bad happen. But it, we obviously, like, we're living in a horror universe, so we gotta, we gotta be horrifying. So let's stare out the window. Oh, crap. The stars gleam back smugly, providing no answers. Shuddering, you return to your desk. By the end of the night, your papers are in disarray and you have a headache. Come morning, you discover you accidentally signed off on the jettisoning, or jettisoning of supplies. It's too late to undo the damage, but you make a mental note to avoid working under such stress. Well, crap. Fortunately, we're almost back to London. If only we were a little faster. I really do hope that something in future that we actually get access to is like, you know, faster trains. Of course, then again, maybe the trains are faster. Or, like, you know, the ones we could upgrade. I don't know. I'm under the impression that's not a thing right now, but hopefully that'll be a thing in the future. Alright, now as I recall, it's it's somewhat difficult and expensive to get our terror to go back down. Oh yeah, now that we're here, it should stop going up, right? Let's keep an eye on this. Okay, no, never mind. Now in New Winchester, once we get within range of, like, the city, it stops going up, but apparently London is just a terrifying place, and terror keeps going up regardless. That is useful to know, actually. But I was kind of hoping that wouldn't be the case, so that we'd actually, you know, have a bit of a reprieve once we got here, but apparently... Apparently God has indeed abandoned us, so... I guess, you know, we'll make do with what we can, I suppose. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Once we get close to the actual station, it has stopped, though. I mean, I suppose it would be a little overpowered, perhaps, if, like, the entire radius of, uh, London did, in fact, actually... Let's see here. Oh, Bronzewood. Oh, no, you want Bronzewood. And I have no Bronzewood. I do have some unseasoned hours, though. That's you. Wait. This is a different graphic than it was before, isn't it? It used to be, like, a, a barrel. Let's see. Fireworks for Parliament or Bronzewood for Parliament. Oh yeah, what prospects do we have? It's just uh, literature for Palmyre and Plenty, right. We, uh, we've we lost a fair amount of money since we've come here, so I figure... It's probably in our interest. We're go we'll go back to the Reach, we'll start working on getting some money. And, you know, we'll kind of see where things go from there. Oh yeah, we've got this whole uh, saying device as well. 
We could buy some shielding. Ooh, fitted cupboards. I'm pretty sure these are even better than the cupboards we have now, right? Yeah, this only adds plus three. This adds plus eight. And yeah, that does that. We've got the cabins. Not that we really need the additional people. We'll worry about the cupboards later. I mean, having a bigger hold will definitely be useful at some point, but for now... Oh, this got changed. Didn't it? Didn't this used to have uh, more of these slots? I think it did. Or at least on one of these things. So the Moloch remains like the best, the best we could have. This looks like it would be really slow, doesn't it? Also, I believe, uh, what is it? Next week, I think. Or not next week, next month. Next month's update is going to add um, new weapons and equipment for our ships and stuff. So that's going to be pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Actually, this update, I think it might have been this update as well, in addition to adding more fret. I think it also added new uh, creatures for us to, um, yeah, to fill in here. So we don't have to deal with this diffident bat all the time necessarily. We could have friendlier, more helpful bats. Where is the work world again, by the way? It was Nice, wasn't it? I think it was Nice. Let's have a look at our quests again. Uh, no, not here. We go. The journal. The journal. My goodness, we have we have so many quests, don't we? It's pretty cool. Yes, the half. Yes. Rabazon Workworld. Uh, da, 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 ministry approved permits. Player of foundries through smog. You are nearing the workworlds. Oh, okay, all right, right. We were in the right place to begin with. Love the music here. It's gonna be kind of a shame going back to the Reach after all the excitement of Albion. And I mean, we have we haven't even discovered everything there is to discover in Albion. But you know, there'll be time. This is all below me, right? Yes, yes it is. I should have known by the, like, the slight different color. Iron and sweat and misery. I love the smell of misery in the morning. You know, except I like totally don't. Nursery 12 is an ominous sounding name. Why is it 12? Why is it called a nursery? I hope they're not nursing like humans in there. Humans to become workers, the bit between. All right, we wanna, no, we don't wanna go here. We would like, ah, deliver the sequencer's package. When you explain the nature of your delivery to the overseers, some appropriately downtrodden, or downtrodden workers are summoned. Huzzah! Summoned workers are exquisitely downtrodden. The overseers take vocal pride in having gone an extra mile on your behalf and carefully selected the most miserable of a bad bunch. The amassed laborers shuffle their feet, apparently expecting a trick. Finally, a filth-faced man steps forward, ducking his head in greeting, and fumbles the package open. He picks out one of the bowtie manuals and stares at it for a while. A series of emotions pass very visibly over his face. Finally, he inclines his head and thanks you without inflection. Well. Yay. That's some good stuff. Now, last time we were here... Right, we could go on the tour, but... I think we need two barrels in order to, uh, ow, two barrels in order to get back home to the Reach, so we'll go on that tour the next time we come to Albion, but for now, we want to go back to the Reach so that we can make ourselves some money so that we can get, like, the awesome Moloch-class freighter and thus have, you know, a better ship that can blow up more stuff and generally just be better in every possible way, probably. Probably, but not necessarily guaranteed. Man, this is beautiful. Though I've got to say, I am impressed with like just the size and scale of this. Like, it's hard to believe that man was able to build something like this, you know? I mean, I'm almost inclined to believe that this was not the work of man and it was just always here because this is massive, ridiculously massive, impossibly massive. For something that, you know, only takes place 10 years after Sunless Sea. But then again, with the ability to manipulate and dilate time, I suppose it's possible to 
Like, this is, like, the equivalent of centuries of work building all this up here. But it was done in just a decade by, again, you know, manipulating time. You know, kind of unfortunate for the workers, I guess. And by I guess, I mean, like, very definitely unfortunate for them. But here we are, and I guess that's all... All we can do. I mean, we'll, we'll fight the good fight. I, I've got a good feeling about it. We'll, we'll take down the monarchy eventually. Make uh, life better for the working class. For the proletariat. The common worker. The average denizen of the... Of the uh, high wilderness. Alright. Yes. Can't wait until we... Until we get this. I mean, we'd probably have to do some like... Story stuff in London, I imagine. Which would probably be the uh, the burrower below is watching you. Well, that's ominous. And by ominous, I mean ominous. You deliver the barrels to the relay hours looms, which clank and grind. They spin the jack at a fresh time, which you. Yeah, this is new. The burrower below. That's one of the gods of space, basically. And if I recall, it's not necessarily a pleasant one. So apparently, using these transit relays draws its ire. Well. Then again, it could be watching pleasantly. I don't know. I mean, it's ominous. It's scary. It's freaktacular. So much more to explore, isn't there? Anyway, let's uh, let's go up to Port Prosper. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's going on over there. What am I hearing? What is this? Like leaking something, whatever it is. Oh god, no, no, don't, don't. Crap. I didn't bring my, uh... I did not bring my uh, saying device. You know what? I don't even know now that I think about it why I left it in the bank when I could have just held on to it. You know? Silly of me, really. I mean, there was something we could have explored. But uh, now, the opportunity has been lost, at least for now. I mean, assuming that's just uh, like a random event island and it'll be gone the next time we're, we're there. I can't say for sure. A good price for verdant seeds. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy some of those because, you know, they're cheap and there's usually a, a market for seeds. Alright, what do we got here? Let's see here. And a private... You know what? Let's take this factory tour. Lurk in the shadows or admire the factory. Ooh, cool. Factories of Port Prosper's East End belch out smoke. Inside, hours mined from the mother of mountains are refined. Oh yeah, we should go there to get some more hours, seeing as we do have our own claim there now. The workers live in tenement blocks adjoining the smokestacks and are rarely seen in the rest of Port Prosper. Today, the owner of the Windward Refinery is allowing visitors to tour his facility. Lurk in the shadows. Loiter, even. This will always increase your eastward reputation. And this will always increase our westward reputation. Alright. Aha! Success! And we are now tolerated. Cool. Alright. From your vantage point in the gloom, you see all sorts of things the other visitors are not privy to. Barrels being assigned to destinations based on bribes rather than need. Fatigued workers revivified by sips of unrefined hours. Several respond poorly and are hauled away to the infirmary. Only the most useful and vigorous workers have been assigned to the workstations the tours pass through. The rest wait in less sightly rooms. In the shadows, one aged man catches your eye and winks. See, this is why we have to overthrow the monarchy, dammit. Let's have a meeting. Ooh, the per parsimonious chairman's offer. Interesting. The officers of the Windward Company on Port Prosper are elegantly appointed. Ooh, he's missing a tooth in that shiny forehead of his. Anyway, elegantly appointed, if antiquated. Paintings of old London and the Z adorn the walls. The parsimonious chairman sits behind his mahogany desk, a decanter of brandy at his left hand, and a series of neatly stacked reports at his right. A fire has been lit in the cavernous hearth. It is too warm. Let's see. The note came from him. He prompts an opportunity for profit. 
pours the brandy into two glasses. He produces a ruler from his desk to measure the amount and adjusts accordingly. Wow, that's really precise. When he, he is, <clears throat> when he is at last satisfied, he hands you a glass. To business, he smiles. He reveals the extensive damage to his teeth. I was a pugilist back in London, a young man's game. He invites you to join him by the window, where starlight dazzles the sloping streets of Prosper. A place like this is only kept safe by toil, you understand. The pioneers who built it, the politicians who funded it, the people who defended it from. His lips curl, or his lip curls. The tackities. Those who toil in such labor are rewarded. Proof is required, of course. Nameplates will do. We keep lists of their engines. Oh, okay, so we can... He's like the opposite of the, uh, the, uh, the lovely young lady in Lustrum who wants us to blow up, uh, like, government ships. All right. I mean, I suppose we could play both sides. That does seem kind of, you know, yes. Oh, where did I even get all these sky stories? I forget, but now we can travel. Oops. All right. Where are we, uh... Where are we delivering them to? That's a good question. I didn't pay attention. Let's, uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Wait, hang on a second here. Oh, there we go. Delivering a settler. It wants to be taken to Titania. Oh, that's where it was last time. All right. I mean, we're probably gonna have to go fight some bees again. I mean, we always have to fight the bees. But we get some good money for it, so the coin will be well spent. And also, you know, we should see what's happening over there because Titania does have some business going on. Wait a minute, these are closed now, aren't they? They look older, like more ravaged than they were when we were last here. I mean, I'm not sure if that's just like a change in the latest update or if that's an indication that going over to Albion, like more time passed here than over in Albion. And now we might be doomed. Doomed. Yeah. Who knows? I certainly don't. In any case, I figure I will cut away until we get to Titania and then we will wrap this episode up. All right, and here we go. Aha, rally to the defense. Wait. Wait. Does it matter which one I fight or should I just rally to fight the hive? Let's see, settlers run for the streets. Of 10 and all, five and all. All right, let's uh, rally to their defense. All right, so we lost a little bit of standing. Gain a tale of terror, gain some more terror, a bit more chorister nectar. All right. Ooh, and the Cosmogonic Observatory. In their blue and gold finery, the Titanians look like sarcophagi brought to life, replete with hieroglyphic instructions soon into their garments. The pharaonic enthusiast stands by you on stage, holding her crook and flail proudly. The celestial stalwart stands by your side. He stares away into the far reaches of the high wilderness, off into the stars. The Rhapsodic Mare presents you the ceremonial scissors. It is complete. Alright. That's pretty cool. Oh, and the Empress's head as well. Nice. Huzzah! Alright. Uh, write a port report, as always. Oh, crap. I forgot to turn in the port reports we had in Albion while we were there. Oh, is there actually... Is there anything else that, uh... Needs to be built at this point? Apparently not. All right. Ah, yes. Drop off a settler. Let's see. They have arrived at their destination. Urge them to disembark. And we gained a couple of sovereigns for our efforts. A breeze wafts the sweet perfumes of wildflower in your direction. Lovers race by in various state... Oh, yeah. We've read this before. Maybe I should have dropped them off at a different place. You know, just so they could. Good show! I should say we got here in record time! Record time! Let's hope they're as eager here as you've been. Here's your reward. Nice. Ooh, we can offer an exhibit for the bower. 
inspire a new fashion. But that'll, that'll all wait until the next time. For now, though, of course, it's time to say goodbye. So until the next time, as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button or maybe leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking and I will see all you in the next video.